Don't you just love it when you order something online and nine months later, it still doesn't show up? Yeah, sounds like a scam. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and today we're hosting the grand finale in this crazy three-parter UV Len scam buster. Now, if you haven't seen the beginning of this crazy quest, I recommend you check that out first. But in summary, here's what UV Len claims to be. UV Len claims to be a portable digital hand sanitizer, which converts a phone's flashlight into UVC light. This is possible thanks to the patented ultraviolet, germicidal, irradiation coat, plus diffraction grating and dichroic mirror filter. Yeah, okay. In my past episodes, I made some educated guesses as to why this is fake, because there's no way a thin, cheap material could practically increase the frequency of full-spectrum light into far UVC light. So, all of that is great, but the problem is, I want to test the product for real, not just make educated guesses. But the product still isn't here. It's been nine months and it still hasn't showed up, and I've even contacted the company. They replied to me saying, oh, there's gonna be a tracking number soon. Yeah, that never happened. But friends, I gotta say, the Computer Clan community, you guys, you're the best tech community out there because you're always there to help me out. One of my awesome viewers from South Korea somehow got his hands on an official, genuine UV Len product. And he shipped it to my lair. So now, let's take a look at the packaging, examine the claims that are on it, and then we'll take a look at the product itself. The packaging claims UV Len is antibacterial tested 99%. Grammatically, I don't know if that means it reduces bacteria, by 99% or if the test is only 99% complete, but moving on. The packaging reiterates some of the features of the product and says there's a free mobile app. On the back, you can scan the QR code to download this app, but weirdly enough, it just brings you to the UV Len homepage. You can navigate to the download button manually and then choose Google Play or Apple App Store. However, the App Store button does not bring you to the UV Len app. It brings you to a generic strobe light application which looks nothing like the advertisements. The Google Play button also doesn't work correctly. Instead of bringing you to the Play Store, it brings you to a OneDrive link where you can download the APK file and load it manually on your phone. The packaging also lists these health warnings to try to make it seem more legitimate, I guess. But if my hypothesis is correct, these warnings won't mean anything because there's no UVC light being emitted from the product. So now let's take a look at the product itself, and then afterwards, we'll put it to the test. The UV Len itself feels really cheap, but for $15, you really can't expect much. I think. The claimed bio sheet feels extremely flimsy, and it's likely just a thin piece of plastic. None of this sci-fi jargon BS they were trying to spew earlier. The product adheres to the back of your phone, and it can slide out over your phone's flashlight. I'll admit, the adhesive worked a little bit better than I thought it would, but after a few tests of putting it into my pocket, it already popped off. So now the big question, can it actually emit UVC light and disinfect surfaces? Well, I appreciate your guys' patience, but now the wait is over. We're gonna test it out. My first test was with Petri dishes. I swabbed an iPad in the screen corner and on the power button, and then I swabbed the Petri dish. Then I shined the UV Len product for a solid 10 seconds, not with the strobing feature, on the iPad surfaces, and then repeated the swabbing. Then I let the Petri dishes sit, for four days, but I noticed the UV dish was actually growing more bacteria than the control. I knew that couldn't be accurate, so I assumed my swabbing was just a little inconsistent and sloppy. So I decided to restart the experiment and try again. This time I tried using a dirty dollar bill. As I was swabbing, I was counting how many motions I was doing in my head, and then I did the same thing with the Petri dish, hoping for better results. Then I shined the UV Len on the dollar bill for a solid 10 seconds, and then repeated that consistent swabbing. Then I let the Petri dish sit for six days, and I still had the same problem. The UV variable Petri dish was growing more bacteria than the control. Maybe I'm just not a real scientist. Okay, so it's time to rethink this. Honestly, I just wanted to use the Petri dishes because I thought it would be fun, but clearly I suck at using these things. So there's a simpler approach to this. I just have to use UV reactive surfaces. When you shine a UV light at a monochrome CRT, for example, you'll notice a glow because the CRT is reacting to the UV light. But when I shine the UV len at the CRT, I do not get a reaction, indicating there's no UV light emitting from the UV len. 
I also used a UV light testing card, which is specifically made for UVC light, which is a higher frequency of UV light, and that's the type of light UV LEN claims to emit. But before we use the testing card with the UV LEN, we need to test it with a true UVC light just to make sure it's working properly. So, behold, my patented Crazy Ken UVC light testing station. Yeah, it's just a prototype, but it'll work. For the control, I placed the testing card under a real UVC tube, and immediately the green circle glowed, indicating the light from the tubes was in fact UVC and the card was working properly. Then I shined the UV LEN at the card, and sure enough, no dot was present. No dot was present on the UVAB test card either, completely debunking UV LEN's claims. And another observation I made was the color of the UVC light on camera. I noticed to the naked eye the UVC light looks more white, but on camera it looks cyan. But the UV LEN light looks nothing like the UVC tubes light, to the naked eye and on camera. I don't have the scientific facts as to why that color change happens between the naked eye and the camera, but that's just an observation I made. So now I can officially say this product is bullsh**. And it's a huge shame that they still try to sell this thing on their website. And all they're doing is ripping off consumers. By the way, if you see any other scam tech products online and you think they would be good for this show, feel free to DM them to me on Twitter. And stay tuned because I have some other great scam bustings coming up, including the part two of the ProPods investigation. It's gonna be fun. Now, all I can say is thanks for your patience and thanks for sticking with me through these nine months as I tried to dig into this investigation some more. And hey, if you want to help me buy some more crappy scam products, feel free to pledge to my Patreon and I'll give you some cool perks in return. Thanks in advance for your support. And feel free to subscribe for more tech episodes coming out all the time. I love doing episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Yes.